guys, hello, hello, welcome back to the channel for another quick live stream. Well, I say a quick live stream. I'm actually going to be going at this for probably a couple of hours. This is Train Sim World from Dovetail Games. Came out just a few days ago on consoles and as a kind of a complete package on PC. It had been available uh, in, in parts on PC, but is now available as a full game. And... Uh, I love this. I've been I've been playing this for around about 24 hours or so now, and uh, I absolutely love this game. Uh, it kind of ticks a few boxes and fulfills a, a you know an old childhood dream of mine to uh, to be a train driver. So uh, let's jump in and take a quick look at this. To let me know what the audio is in terms of volume, if it's too loud or or you know if it's drowning me out because I'm not really sure. On this for volume so now let me know and we'll play about with the audio configurations a little bit until it's it's not quite so prominent So, let's take a look at Train Sim World from Dovetail Games. Now, they've been very kind enough to provide me with uh, a copy of this game so that I could uh, share it with you guys on the channel, both in terms of live streams and in a in sort of a video series as well. So, uh, we're going to do a first look live stream tonight. We're going to do a series of videos over the coming weeks on this, looking at the various different sort of uh, routes, and I'll try and look at putting together a guide for the collectibles in the game as well at some point although that's going to be a little way off because I've got to find them first <laughs> but we will try and cover various different things now within Train Sim World there are three main settings three main locations there's New York uh, for the Amtrak trains uh, there is uh, the UK for the uh, Great Western trains and there is also Germany as well for the German uh, sort of uh, high-speed trains over there so if we press any button to start we get the chance to create a profile now the, the the options in here are quite limited when it comes to creating a profile you don't have a lot of different choices in terms of your avatar you do have a few but they're all pretty much the same and they are the same uh, as the people that you'll see on platforms and stuff so I'm just going to jump into the one that I've already kind of created. You can see I've uh, reached level 8 so far. I've been playing the Great Western stuff a lot. Uh, and it is quite a lot of fun. So when you go in, you get to select your experience. You have three sections here. As I say, you've got Rapid Transit, which is set in Germany. You have the Great Western Express, which is set here in the UK. And then you have the NEC New York as well. Today we're going to look at Great Western, because this is the only one I've really kind of been playing about with so far. So it's the only one I can really kind of give you any kind of real stuff, you know, in terms of uh, feedback on. Uh, but at, uh, as I say, we are going to do a whole series of videos on this game. Uh, so we will end up looking at the Rapid Transit and the NEC New York over the course of those videos. Yeah, a little description with each one that you choose as well. And you get the same little guy that pops up as well when you're loading in depending on yeah and the uniform changes depending on which service you've gone with whether you've gone with you know the german service the uk or the american service it's always the same guy just a different uniform with that lovely slicked back hair and that perfectly quaffed mustache Jesse says that he loves the original Microsoft Train Simulator for PC. Uh, unfortunately, I never got to play that. Uh, never have had that much of a good gaming PC. I've got a laptop now, but it's not exactly a gaming laptop. It's a, uh, a second-hand Sony Vio I picked up for a couple of hundred quid, and it does everything I need to do as a sort of a, a, a multimedia center in terms of you know managing my channel and web content and. Uh, watching movies and stuff but beyond that it's not exactly a, a great machine for gaming so I've always been a console gamer and we've never really had a proper train sim like this before uh, and I've been looking forward to a game like this making its way over and, and I didn't even think that this would ever happen you know six months ago um, and I found out about month two months ago that this was actually coming out and I was really excited uh, and so much I really do I really do like this 
Jim Scales, is this out now for purchase? Yes, this game came out uh, two, three days ago, I think it was. It is now out on uh, on consoles and PC as a full game experience. Uh, price will vary depending on your store location. I was given this copy for free by Dovetail so that I could actually show it to you guys on the channel in terms of live streaming and a video series. So... Uh, we're going to have a quick look at a couple of the tutorials just to operation. Then we're going to jump into one of the scenarios. So when you go into the tutorials, there are different, you know, basics that you need to look at. So as an introduction to each of the three trains in the GN, uh, in the Great Western series here, and then there's a, a little quick tutorial on how to stop on a station. Uh, we're going to be running uh, a class 166 introduction on this one here. There's a little uh, DMU diesel multiple unit. And you get uh, a few of these little bits pop up on your loading screen showing you kind of the line that you can run uh, or parts of the lines that you can run and where the stations are. You're not going to stop at every one. There's the New York one. I haven't had much of a chance to look at New York yet, but I will be doing that at some point in the very near future. Uh, didn't release Heavy Hall for console. Um... There is two, or there are two versions of the game. There's the standard edition, and there is the deluxe edition. The deluxe edition, uh, in terms of UK price, is an extra fiver, and it includes an extra CSX loco, which might be what you're talking about there. So one of the... <laughs> okay, get the speech out of the way. Uh, so one of the things that uh, they like to do is recreate the ridiculously hard to hear tannoys that you hear at stations. So it's like you're talking to somebody on a walkie-talkie. Um, it's kind of realistic, but also kind of frustrating because it's a little harder to hear. Uh, so I don't know if you'll hear all of that stuff very clearly, but obviously we do have subtitles on the screen, so you will be able to read it if you can't hear it. Uh, so we're gonna go and jump into the cab. Now, visually, I have to say, this game looks so much better than I thought it would do on console. It really does. I mean, uh, a lot of the stuff kind of blurs a little bit as it moves further away. Uh, the draw distance in terms of real clarity of detail isn't um, a huge draw distance, but it is enough to really give you a really nice kind of look. Uh, and obviously, yeah, the more things kind of blur out a little bit into the distance. Uh, sometimes you get a little bit of motion blur as well, but generally, overall, I am incredibly impressed with how smooth this runs and how good it looks on console. Now, I will give you a little caveat to that. I am playing on a PS4 Pro, so I can't, uh, I can't speak to how good it looks on a standard PS4 or indeed how it looks on an Xbox. I, my only experience I can provide you is PS4 Pro. And based on what I have and, and seen and played so far, it looks and runs very well indeed. Does this allow us to do long cargo trains? Uh, yes. Um, well, it does kind of let me do cargo work with the Class 66 on the UK stuff. I haven't looked really much at the American or the Germany stuff yet. I'm going to get to that. Uh, as we go through the video series, but uh, yes, freight work is available as well as sort of passenger stuff. It's not all just passengers. So we're getting a few control prompts popping up telling us to look around and obviously take a seat, which we're going to do. And we can switch between precise and navigation. Is this game on normal or deluxe? This is the normal game. Um, so it does not include the additional CSX Loco in the American pack uh, that the deluxe version brings. But as far as I know, that is the only difference between the two versions, the normal and the deluxe, is that the deluxe gets an extra Loco. So uh, to get us started, we need to uh, turn on the master key. We get these nice little uh, symbols popping up to show us where we need to look. Now we need to deal with the reverser. That alarm is the AWS self-test system. You will need to acknowledge this before continuing. Press the 
US reset button. You need to charge the brakes before we start the engine to ensure the train does not roll back. Set the throttle brake to full service. Okay, so let's charge the brakes up. When you're ready, hit the engine start button on the desk to get the engine running. Get the engine switched on. Now these processes are different well, depending on which train that you're on. Today. So it's not always the same, and some of the controls are shortcutted. And I tell you what, it also impressed me as well. This game does have keyboard support. Uh, and now the mouse doesn't do a damn thing. <laughs> I plugged my mouse in the other day, uh, yesterday, to see if the mouse worked, and I couldn't get any movement at all using the mouse. But uh, you know, the game does support keyboards. So you know, if you are used to playing with a keyboard, then you can actually play this on console with a keyboard. Uh, assuming you can figure out what all the keyboard shortcuts are. I haven't seen a list of the controls yet. I would imagine they are the same as the PC version of the game. So, I, you know, if you go online, you should be able to find a list of the PC controls for keyboard. Um, and then obviously, if you do need to sort of move around and stuff, you can use your D-pad. But, you know, if you're playing with uh, a combination of D-pad and uh, keyboard, then uh, you should be nicely sorted there. Yeah, now we need to set our headlights today, so let's play with a headlight switch here. Put the train in forwards so we're ready to get moving. Using the reverser again, set the handle into forward. So let's put our reverser into forward motion. There we go. By setting the throttle brake to off, they will start to release. Turn the brakes off. Nearly there. Now apply some power and get this unit moving. Ease the throttle brake handle in. Notch one. There we go. So you can see we're getting some of those uh, joypad shortcuts popping up as well. So I can use my R2 button to actually increase my throttle. As you can see on the right hand side of the screen, throttle brake is now at position three. I can also use R1 to reduce it down. So I can go up and down on the throttle using R1 and, and R2. And we're looking to build up to a speed of, uh, I think, 10 miles an hour, maybe 15 miles an hour. You can see we've got a little red line that shows where our speed is, and then a solid red line across the speedo, which shows the limit, the, or the speed limit on the track at that particular moment. So they want us to slow down. Again, it's showing you we can use R1 to do that if we want to. And we're coming to a gradual stop. There are some additional stuff that pops up on screen that I've actually turned off. So I'll just quickly go into uh, the pause menu and go into settings. Uh, there are some other things that you can play about with in here. Uh, I have the next speed limiter turned off and the signal marker turned off. Let's turn those back on because they are default switched on. I'll apply those changes just so you can see what they will look like when you uh, when you get those on the game and there you can see we've got uh, a signal marker showing in front of us and a speed limit change coming up as well and there we go that is the tutorial on how to get a 166 underway now as I say the controls change ever so slightly um, or quite substantially, depending on the train that you're driving and also the service, you know, the company that you're working for. So if you're, the UK controls are all fairly similar. Uh, they get a little bit complicated with the, uh, at least compared to this one, uh, when you move across to the app. So now that we've had a quick look at, oh, it's going to reload the same tutorial, isn't it? Now that we've had a quick look at how to start a train, uh, we're going to do the stopping tutorial, and then once that's done, so you can see the basics on that as well, then we'll jump into one of the scenarios and we'll actually take a train out on a run. And there you can see there is the uh, the Leipzig S2 S-Bahn, which is the German part of this. So we've just done this one, so let's quit back to the main menu. Right, 
more loading screens. So we're going to run the station stopping tutorial now. Is there a beer passenger mode? Not as such, no. But uh, on some uh, of these scenarios, you are expected to get to a certain point and then pick up a train at that point. So you can kind of... Uh, one of the, the missions is to get a train to, um, to Paddington Station. Uh, so that you can then take control of the train that's waiting at Paddington for you to, to drive it out. So you can jump in there and you can be a passenger. So you can either sit in the second seat in the engine cab or you can sit anywhere you want on the train, either in first class or standard seat seating, whatever you want to do. Stations correctly and on time is a vital part of keeping the railway running smoothly. Let's take a look at bringing a Class 166 service to a stop at Twyford. To start, bring the train up to speed, set the reverser to forward, and apply a small amount of power using the combined throttle brake to get us off the line. Okay, so uh, let's get our reverser set to forward, and uh, let's get some uh, some power going. There we go. You can see we're slowly starting to accelerate. There is a free roam. Um, element to the game, so you could, I suppose, jump onto another one, but there's no specific be a passenger mode. You know, um, you can just sort of wander onto a train while you're kind of exploring. Okay, so they want us to get up to uh, 40 miles an hour, so let's just uh, accelerate up to uh, setting 5 on the throttle. There are 7 acceleration settings on the uh, Class 166. You can see we have a yellow light signal up ahead in about 570 yards. We need to hit 40 miles an hour. And once we've done that, then we'll start coasting into the station before we gradually slow ourselves down to a stop. almost at the target speed there we go so let's turn the throttle off throttle is kind of like cruise control when it's switched off you don't keep going at the same speed but you kind of you know, you do gradually, eventually start slowing down. Again, it depends on the size of the train and the, and the weight of the train as well. But, you know, uh, on a small train like this, you can keep your speed going quite well, quite consistently. So we need to start slowing down. So I'm going to hit braking one. Oh, actually, that's our checkpoint to slow down. Okay, so we'll put braking one on, which is the softer of the two braking settings. Gradually bringing that speed down. Bringing it down a little bit too much because I actually slowed down too much too soon. So we'll just coast for a moment. We're going to get uh, a nice little kind of image of where our train needs to be. You can see uh, the green at the end is where the front of the train needs to be. And obviously we've got our little marker here as well. Now I think, I do believe that this sort of ghosted image of the train on the tracks can be turned off as well in your settings. So let's, let's slow down a little bit more.
gradually rolling in. First time I did this, I did it so much better than this. <laughs> Making a bit of a mess of it this time. And bring it to a stop. And there we go. That was it. That's the basics of how to bring your train to a stop. So, you've got two buttons here uh, that both uh, do train door release. It doesn't seem to matter which one of the two you press. And that's lit up to show that the doors are now open. You can see in the top left corner, the load passenger symbol starts to fill up. And this is uh, handy when you're trying to you know, load passengers in and get onto your next one. This shows you once that cycle is complete, then you can close your door and head off. It usually gives you the first one or two into, uh, stops with prompts and then after that it's up to you to remember to do it. So let's close the doors. And there we go. Nice and simple little uh, tutorial on how to stop at a station. Very straightforward, very easy. So now that we've had a quick look at a couple of the tutorials, let's actually go out on a run. So uh, let's hit up one of the scenarios and see how well we do. So within each sort of setting, as I say, there are three settings. We have Rapid Transit, we have the Great Western Express, and then the NEC New York. They are the three train companies to choose from. You have a small number of scenarios. So for GNER, we have Down the Line, Westworld, Christmas Closures, Aggregate Industries, and Dragline. So those are the five scenarios. But what you can also do is you can actually go into services and you can actually pick which train you want to drive so if we want to say drive the 66 um, for some freight services you can select that loco you can choose uh, from presets as to what type of weather you want there's a lot to choose from as you can see and you can even do winter driving as well, including in a blizzard, <laughs> which is not easy, I can guarantee you, uh, with snow, clear, cloudy, and then back to spring again. So uh, oh, we need to actually, once we've done that, then actually show you these are all the different services that you can run. And you choose the one you want to run, and it'll be from such and such to... Uh, to wherever. So this one here is the 1101 service from Bristol Terminal to Felixstone North. And it gives you some information on the route on that one. Uh, from Dagenham to uh, Dickcut Yard. Uh, from the Bristol Terminal to Felixstone North. Angerstein Wharf to Stoke Gifford. And you can just see a little bit of what you're doing. So it's mainly, you know, with this one because it's freight, you're hauling uh, HKA wagons. Uh, usually 12 of them uh, but uh, we're going to jump into a scenario as I say and there are scenarios and services for each of the different areas so if you are as I say playing in the, the great western stuff as we are then you've got five scenarios and all those services to play about with depending on the loco you choose and it's the same if you go into uh, the uh, uh, American side or the German side you'll have a choice of scenarios and then a choice of services you can just free play as well uh, let's see which one of these do we want to do which one do you want to see which one of these uh, scenarios do you want to see let me know in the comments and that's the one we'll choose
I have one vote for down the line. <laughs> Anybody else? Anyone else want to see? Just say one, two, three, or five, and uh, that'll be the one. Oh, there's one for the aggregate industries. I'll give you another minute or two to uh, get those suggestions in. Uh, in terms of price, someone was asking how much the game is. Uh, in the UK store, it is thirty nine ninety nine, uh, and if you want the digital deluxe edition, which in is uh, it includes an extra locomotive, an extra uh, American CSX loco, uh, that is forty four ninety nine. Prices will vary depending on your region and the store that you're using, and also your chosen currency. So I would imagine uh, in America this will be sort of between forty five and fifty bucks somewhere in that region. 